Hello, welcome to um, another video. I'm starting a series, it's going to be making a platformer game in GDeverb entirely from scratch using Kenny's assets. I'll link all of the ones that I'm using as well as his website in the uh, description. They're completely free to use and I'd recommend it for prototyping and stuff. So I've just made a, a completely new game. <coughs> That's all I've done. So I'm just going to make a new scene. And I'm just going to rename this and call this game, let's just say. So, th the reason why I'm making this is because it, it's like a starting point for people to <coughs> make their own uh, platformers. So they can use this um, tutorial series to make their own. So in this, we're just going to go over just making the basic platformer... <coughs> uh, things which um, every platformer has and then in the next one we're gonna do like um, gonna go like more in depth with it and, and just keep going in making more stuff to it basically so I'm just gonna quickly go to properties here I'm gonna change this to 1920 by 1080 and you can change this version number if you want I'm just gonna change it to 0.0.1 because that's what I always do because you know 0.0.1 I'm going to click apply and to make this change to that uh, new resolution you have to close it and then open it again and zoom out you can hold control or command to zoom out command as a Mac <coughs> oops I don't want spot spot like such <coughs> you can hold down space and left click to drag it around or if you're on Windows you can just hold the middle mouse button if you're on Mac, you're going to have to hold down space and left click. Um, <coughs> yeah, so let's add our character, our player. So I'm just going to call this player. Make a new sprite. And I'm just going to add uh, some stuff here. So I'm going to go over to art. I'm going to go to player. And you see we have a bunch of these, uh, where is it, we're just going to do stand, we're just going to open up stand, and this is going to be, <coughs> this is going to be our idle animation, so if we drag him in and we play it, <coughs> you can see that's just his idle animation right there. <coughs> so now we're going to add in his... Uh, walking animation. So we're going to go to art, we're going to go to player and walk one and walk two. We're just going to open both of those. Okay. And here we go. We're just going to click on loop so that it loops through it every time we want to. Uh, every time we want it to walk, it will loop through the animation. We can click on the preview button and preview it. We could change the frame rate. I can change it to I change it to five. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> so now we have that. We can add a behavior to this uh, sprite, and we're just going to add platformer character. You can search for new um, behaviors as well. There's this new thing where you can make your own behavior as well. It's 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 really cool. But for now, we're going to just do platformer character. And yeah, you can play around with these. Make it. Uh, make it work however you want it to I'm going to click, click apply now and when we play you'll see our character falls down that is because <coughs> he's falling down because he's he's got physics on him because he's a platformer character and there's nothing for him to land on so let's make something for him to land on this is going to be a tiled sprite though not, not a normal sprite this, this tiled sprite is just going to be called let's just call it floor or grass even grass <coughs> so you can edit with, with Piscal or you can just select a new image <coughs> and what a tiled sprite is different to <coughs> a tiled sprite is different to a <coughs> uh, to a normal sprite <coughs> is because um, it can <coughs> um, when you drag it out to make it um, larger as you would with a normal sprite it basically du um, du duplicates itself over an area so if I just show you here 
I think it's 32 by 32. No, that's way too small. It's just like 128 by 128. It's just 8. Uh, 64 by 64 yeah but as you can see here when I drag it it will just du uh, duplicate itself over an area whereas with this it just makes it bigger so I'm gonna go ahead and just make this 64 by 64 all right so I'm actually going to use the grid here so I can show the grid and currently it's probably 32 by 32 so I'm going to set it to 64 by 64 here and click apply and now I can drag this and set it equal to the grid so that's pretty cool so now we have this so if we click play <coughs> you'll notice our character falls through it that's because our, our grid isn't anything that the player can go on and so we've got to make it wait I said grid didn't I our grass isn't a platform so we're going to add a platform behavior to it and you've got this uh, drop down the platform is just a normal platform that you run on a jump through platform is a normal platform but uh, you can jump through it so jump up into it and then land on it and and a ladder that's quite self-explanatory so now if we press play you can see he lands on it and we can use the arrow keys to uh, move around space or shift to jump and yeah <coughs> so that's the basic movement <coughs> but of course we don't have uh, our animations or anything done yet so <coughs> here is where our events come in so we're going to make a new event we're going to add a condition and we're going to just do keyboard key pressed and just yeah let's do right key <coughs> so when the right key is pressed uh, we're going to change the animation so I'm just going to search for animation here change the animation of the player and we're going to set it equal to 1 because 1 is the animation of his walk thing as you can see animation 1 it starts off at 0 because that's what <coughs> lists in most programming languages start off at <coughs> starts off at zero apart from like Lua and, and some others probably <coughs> but yeah so now if you'll see when we press the right key <coughs> he walks <coughs> so we're just going to add uh, moving so it is moving uh, make sure it's the platform behavior not the top down one and player and it will automatically fill in the platform object there so okay so when the right key is pressed and he's moving it will do this so <coughs> we want to do this for the left for uh, the left arrow key as well don't we <coughs> so to do that we just got to copy and paste it you can do Control c or command c and then Control c or command v and that will uh paste it and then we can just change this to left so the left key is pressed, it needs to have a capital. I'm not sure it doesn't matter if it doesn't have a capital. Um, does it matter if it doesn't have a capital? I don't know. But since, <coughs> so if we play this now, you'll see that he goes right and he goes left. But he just walks right. <coughs> and since the animation is facing this way, uh, we're going to have to flip it on the horizontal axis I'm pretty sure so flip uh, flip horizontally player and then yes so you're gonna flip it horizontally and what that does as you can see go right and we go left does that but then when we press right again it doesn't flip back <coughs> and all we've got to do is just add flip horizontally player and then no there you go and now you've got your right and left Uh, walking animations <coughs> so we want to make it go back to the idle animation <coughs> when we have finished uh, moving so I'm gonna make a new event <coughs> I'm gonna add a condition and I'm gonna do moving again so it's moving player and we're going to invert it so this basically means when it's not moving 
we're going to change the animation of player. We're going to set it to zero. <clears throat> so now you can see it changes back to zero when we stop moving. So what about when we jump? <clears throat> we want to have an animation play when we jump, don't we? Because at the moment, it just plays whatever um, animation is playing when, when we uh, walking. It just plays that whilst we jump. But we want to have it play a different animation. So we're going to add another animation here. We go to art. <coughs> Not mad. We're going to go to player, and we're just going to go and jump here. <coughs> So idle and stand. Okay, idle and stand are two different things, but right. <coughs> then we can open up jump. Okay, so since this is only a one frame thing, it doesn't need to move or anything. Same with this. So we now have this. We want it to play when he jumps. That's quite easy. We can just do uh is jumping player <coughs> and then change the animation Oops. change the animation of player set it to 2 so for any background noise it's just I live on a motorway um, <coughs> yeah so since jumping is equal to 2 here uh, we will change it to 2 whenever it, it's jumping and that's why having the platformer behavior is so good <coughs> so if I just show you, you can go down to uh, where is it? Go to platform behavior, and then you've got a bunch of these things. So is falling, is grabbing platform ledge, is jumping, is moving, is on floor, is on ladder, and then acceleration, deceleration, and maximum falling speed, and all this stuff you need to make a platformer basically <coughs> so yeah you can you can press backspace whilst one of these is uh, selected to delete it as well <coughs> so now when we play it it should play jumping yeah play the jumping uh, animation when we jump <coughs> so that's great that all works but we want to also add a falling animation because if we just add, let's say, this here, and play, if we jump on this, oh wait, we can't actually jump on it. If we jump on this here, let's say, and then fall down, you'll see that when he falls, he still stays in the jump pose. So we want to add it, well, we. We want to make it so that when he's falling, it changes to a different animation. So we can add another animation, add some more art, player, and uh, where is it? Fall. So this is the falling one here. So if we open that, <coughs> uh, that is number three. And so now we can add a new event and we can do uh, falling. So it's falling, and then player. We're going to change the animation of player. We're going to set it equal to three. And now, whenever we're falling, it does that animation. There you go. <coughs> so that is just a simple platformer. Um, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to do in this one. Uh, of course, I'm probably going to change some of the settings in this. So, I'm probably going to up this to just like that. So, yeah, that is how to make a simple platformer. <coughs> this is part one. I'm going to make part two maybe next week, maybe two weeks. I'm not sure. I've got a bit of stuff going on but yeah so hope you learned some stuff from this uh yeah i'm gonna probably do this all the way until we have a fully playable game with 
maybe maybe even a story and then i'll show you how to uh, export it to pc mac and linux not android or iphone because oh, i've never done that and i'm not sure how to do it <coughs> but i'll link all the things i need to link down in the description so you can go see them and get the assets and all that stuff yeah so subscribe for more and goodbye